are joined by Dr. Mark Fishbein, who is the department head for plant biology, ecology, and evolution. He is also the director of the OSU Herbarium, which is what brings us here today. So thank you for allowing us to be in your lab. Well, thanks. Casey, it's really great to have an opportunity to talk about herbaria. Yeah, so I think a lot of times people um, may know the general concept of a herbarium, but can you explain to us exactly what a herbarium is? Well, sure. A herbarium is a natural history collection, so here we preserve uh, plants, and we preserve them in uh, this form, a dry, flat, specimen that's mounted on a piece of paper with information about when and where it was collected. So there's uh, there's a lot to this and you have a lot in your collection. Can you give us a general idea of how many uh, collections you have? Yeah, the OSU Herbarium has about 160,000 specimens. Wow. They were collected in all places around the world, but naturally we have a strong representation of specimens collected from Oklahoma. No, and that's not just you going out collecting. So how did these collections come about? Yeah, various ways. Uh, they can be sent to the herbarium for documentation of uh, projects um, from connected by researchers around the world. There's many collections made by students and courses and donations from uh, hobbyists okay. that like to collect plants. All right, and you're not the first director, so previous directors have also had kind of influence on this as well. Are there any collections in particular that they might have added to? Yes, uh, so the, my predecessor, Ron Turrell, uh, collected many grass specimens. Mm -hmm. His predecessor, UT Waterfall, was a specialist in the ground cherries, the genus Physalis, mm -hmm. and so we have probably the best collection of that genus in the world. And what, what's your contribution that <laughs> you're really And so really the plants adding? I love are the milkweeds, the genus Asclepius, and we also have a fairly remarkable collection of that genus here. Excellent. So with your collection of Asclepius and some other collections that you have, is OSU kind of known for those? I mean, how does that influence research worldwide? Yeah, so for some of the taxonomic groups that we're known for, researchers will want to study our specimens when they're doing ecological work or taxonomic work in particular, but more broadly, our great representation of the Great Plains and Oklahoma means that people interested in climate change or plant distributions in North America would be interested in studying our collections as well. Okay, and, and I know that you have more than one type of plant. You know, you might have one Asclepius or you might have multiple of mm -hmm. one type of Asclepius. What's the point of having multiple mm -hmm. um, preserved plants of more than one species? That's a great question. Um, we wouldn't have 160,000 specimens if we didn't have many examples of certain species. And it's really important to have that to document the variation within a species as species grow in different regions or at different years that are dry years or wet years, they would appear very different, not just their size but many other aspects. It's important to have collections all through the life history of the plant, showing what they look like as seedlings, as plants before they're flowering, with flowers, with fruits, and also we document the influence of herbivores and other uh, organisms that interact with the plants as well. Okay, so yeah, I mean plants can be regionally slightly different even though they're the same species. Um, and they can look completely different from a juvenile to an adult form. So it's, that's what I was trying to say. That, yes. That's capturing <laughs> exactly that. Exactly <No>. right. <laughs> so what all information can we find on a card? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's look at this card here. So when you're collecting something, what typically is this general information include for a person? Yeah, so we try to, this was collected by a student, and we try to encourage the students to be really good data collectors. Mm -hmm. So it tells us, this was collected at Sanborn Lake. We know who collected it what the date was. We know GPS coordinates. Mm -hmm. We know something about the vegetation it was growing in, the soils. We know what other plants were growing with it. These would be the things that ideally you would want to include when you are making a specimen. Right, and these are collected in the wild, is that correct? You don't take yes. the last of the plant, <laughs> right? But you do collect them in wild. Well, they're collected in the wild. We also document cultivated plants as well. Okay. Um, that can be important because you never know when a species that's well behaved in cultivation becomes our next invasive species. Okay. So having that information 
can be quite useful. Okay. So when if somebody wants to borrow one of these, do they have to actually physically come to their herbarium, or are they like library interlibrary loans that you can yes. share them that way? Both of those. So we take we have visitors that come study our specimens, and we box up specimens and ship them. But over the last 20 years or so, uh, we have been involved, all herbaria have been involved in um, collecting information about collections, putting them in online databases so that for some types of research, you don't actually need to physically see the specimen. And just knowing that it exists and knowing information about the collection can be quite valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and so that saves a lot of air travel mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of wear and tear on the specimens. And who all is accessing this information? Is it just plant people or are there others that are interested in this as well? All kinds of researchers. I mean, uh, people interested in climate change, people interested in uh, herbivory or invasive species might be accessing this information. And really the general public has a great interest in natural history collections for their own sake, but also they are curious about what's growing in their backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and this can be a resource for helping them learn about that kind of stuff. So while botanical gardens are collecting the live plants, you guys are preserving what uh, has been. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just like botanical gardens, there's multiple herbariums around the state as well. Is that correct? That's correct. There are at least 10 herbarium collections in Oklahoma, mostly associated with universities and colleges. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing about OSU's Herbarium. My pleasure. Great to be here. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.